Okay guys, so I'm going to do the auto-tune um, setup now for a turbocharged bike. Um, so I still got this 09 stock map here. Um, I've got my auto-tune turned on, which again, that's in the features and in enables, auto-tune, configure, and like I said, I, I leave it on. Um, but after your idle set, zero these out. You don't want to change your idle. So now we got to add some pressure tables. Since we are not tuning throttle percentage to RPM, we're going to tune from pressure to RPM. So let's go to maps, pressure tables. I'm sorry, map tools, pressure tables, um, and instead of ignition, that would be if you want to change your timing based on on pressure. Um, we're going to do add fuel tables. So mine, I'm going to do number of or table size. Sorry, we're going to do uh, 41. Let's say, so I'm going to go from negative 10, vacuum, and to 30 pounds of boost. Um, you can do it in inner polite, and it will just fill in the rest for you. So now I've got a perfect, just every uh, one inch of vacuum and every PSI of boost. So we can click OK. Um, and now my fuel map here, I can either let's see, we can change this stuff um, to basically get rid of that or you can zero all this out. Um, I, I like to keep this map just for different tuning things. Um, if I've got, I was shown by Peyton at Wicked Motorsports, um, to get rid of my backfire on some deceleration, I added some fuel right here and I just left it. And that's, you know, in my 0% throttle when I just let off after a big pull. So I leave that. But anyway, so to the fuel pressure table, um, uh, we got a big map here. And you don't need to tune it to 30 PSI. I, I would recommend tuning it to at least 3, but maybe 5 PSI above what you plan on running. So if you plan on running no more than 10 pounds of boost, set your table up to go to 15 PSI, and you'll be safe. Just in case, in case you get a boost spike or something loads it up, um, you won't uh, go super rich or lean. So now that we've got this pressure table, we need to change our um, pressure input to our altitude where we're at. So you're going to have some random numbers here. Um, let's say you've got 2.5 and... Uh, I don't know, 29.5. You'll have something weird, but this is very important. Don't go off these numbers that I just presented here. But um, see, if I click OK, it's telling me I've, I have at 9 pounds of boost right now. So if you don't get this down correctly, you're going to have issues. So anyway, again, come back to configure power command tools configure pressure input you need this to say 0.25 you need the second one to say 4.75 make sure your table is 2 and make sure it's enabled now whatever number you have here you need to subtract it by 14.7 so in, in my case I come up with negative 10.82.
do the exact same thing for this number here. Um, I don't I don't remember what my number was at, when I got this, but it was my number came up to thirty two point seven one positive. Okay, so now it's, it says I'm at negative point one five. I mean that's that's close enough. I probably set this up at a di different altitude, so it's a little off, but it's not enough to really change things. So that's probably the most important part of setting this power commander up with a turbo bike. Um, so once you get that set, you're uh, good to go. Make sure your throttle position sensor is good so it knows when you're at zero and full throttle. Um, anyway, and then from there, you can do the exact same thing with the auto-tune as I showed you in the naturally aspirated auto-tune video. Except we're going to do auto-tune tables. And we are going to change it to um, so target AFR tables here instead of basic which is nat naturally aspirated um, we're going to change first the auto-tune style to pressure and then we're going to change our target APR to well you'll just leave it as basic it's, it's going to go off pressure right there though auto-tune style um, ignition tables you're going to be just leaving all this alone. So for the turbo, just come down to auto-tune style and turn it to pressure. It's now OK. Now when I go to my target AFR, we have pressure instead of throttle position. So now my target AFRs are what target air fuel ratios do I want at negative 10 vacuum, negative 9 vacuum, and, and so on. So it's a little different in that sense. You're not tuning by how far the throttle's pushed in versus RPM. You're tuning by how much vacuum or boost you make versus your RPM. But you're going to go through the, the same process. You, you know, your vacuum, you're going to be, let's just say, 0 to negative 10 up to 2,500 for your idle. Um, and again, that's where you're going to start is your idle. If you're doing tuning this bike from scratch, I'm going to do negative 18 again. I think that's where we started. Or excuse me, this is our air to fuel ratio. So let's say we want 13 again at idle, even though that's not relative. Now, instead of this fueling, um, I'm going to come to my fuel pressure table. And the idle, again, probably from about no pressure to negative 10 inches of vacuum to 2,500 RPM in case my idle's high. And I think we were around negative 18, negative 20 is what this bike behind me likes. Um, so then we should be set up to go. So now I'm going to send this map. I'm going to send the table. And my ignition's on, so again, I'm going to start this bike up for a sec. Um, it will take a moment for your O2 sensor to warm up and start working. Um, but again, you'll be able to see the fuel adjustment that Altitune is trying to make to get my idle to 13 AFR. Um, so let's go that far. Like it was a little lean, um, 
you could see my idle was right in this range with that cell tracker. So now I'm going to go get map and up here on the trim. Sometimes you have to click on this trim pressure table before it will get anything and then get table. And so it's trying to add a little bit of fuel through here. So that, that means I'm close. I mean, it's not trying to add 20% fuel. So I know I'm fairly close, but I am going to come to map tools, auto tune table, accept all trims. And now it's added those to my fuel pressure map. Remember these were negative 20s. Now it's changed. So now I'm going to send this map, send the table. I'm just, just get used to always sending those. Sometimes this table sent successfully, by the way, will say not sent successfully. Just hit it again and it should do fine. Um, again, once I get my idle to where I like it, I'm going to come back to my target AFRs and where my idle is, I'm going to just zero these out because I don't want my idle changing. Um, otherwise, when you start your bike up, if you don't have your auto tune set so it comes on when you reach operating temperature, if it's a cold day, it's going to try and tune it in the cold weather, your idle or vice versa on a hot day and it you want it to be your um, operating temp so I zero those out that's just me though so now you're gonna do your thing like I said in the last video get tires that you can run the street on or that you can or put your paddles on go to the dunes and you're I'm gonna come here and just add some fuel based on what we were at, at idle, like negative 20 or whatever it was. So negative 20. So I'm going to come here and go um, negative 10. I'm going to see uh, how close that is. Um, for two pounds of boost, I'm going to do five, or excuse me, negative five. And I hope you realize that negative 10 is less fuel than negative 5 zero is more fuel than negative 5 this goes from negative 100 to positive 200 percent and then you can work this table up maybe here at at five um you know you can add an outrageous amount of fuel um 200 percent so you will stop at 5 psi your bike's gonna fall on its face but uh again don't go get out on the street or the dunes and just um hammer down and get in the high rpms stay in the low rpms and just trying to and try and get into a little boost come back and check out your trim table and see where you're at and again, you really should have the pod 300 or an AFR gauge. Pod 300, you can data log that run, come back, look at your data, and adjust it accordingly. Um, and again, I put this in the wrong table. <laughs> These were supposed to, that negative 10 and negative 5 should have gone in my fuel pressure table here. Um, let's scroll back up because there's, there's my idle stuff. So. Again, like I said, if I was happy for it, this is where I was idling right here where these changes are. And then anything below that, I don't really care. Um, I'm just going to zero those out. So then from here on out, um, I'm going to maybe do negative 10 there. And you could even limit yourself on RPM by adding an outrageous amount of fuel. You know, 200 and at five pounds of boost down 200 that way you're going to fall on your face at 6000 rpm or 5 psi but uh just take your time and slowly build your map um it works well that way and it is safe but and again your air to fuel ratios don't under boost this is going to be different than your na motors but uh, I like 11.8, except not for the whole entire table. Um, 
I do like it richer ride in this area. A little extra fuel in this area actually helps spool the turbo a little quicker. But uh, I hope that guy that gives you guys a better idea. I'm I'm not gonna tell you what to run here because. I'm not going to go down that road. Um, but again, like I said, it's still best to take this to a dyno, have a professional do it. I'm just showing you the basics because I get so many questions asked about this. Um, all this stuff. And it's all on DinoJet's website. It's just nobody wants to take the time to read it. Um, ignition, don't screw with that yet, but you can do an ignition table based on um, vacuum and boost. Um, I guess I will get into a video now on if you want to set up like a true anti-lag on the Power Commander that no one thinks is possible and go from there.